Hi, everybody, and welcome to Be in the Know, Table Games and More. I'm your host, Benny Mancino, the B-Man. And uh, tonight I have a very, very special guest. Joining me is Matt Wilson from the giant behemoth, whatever you want to call it, light and wonder. Matt, welcome to Be in the Know. Oh, fantastic. Thank you for having me. I've seen lots of your videos before and a, a number of esteemed guests that you've had on here. So I'm, I'm in good company. So thanks for having me. Well, maybe our audience can guess by your accent, but uh, you're not originally from the U.S. You're from Australia, correct? Yeah, I just have not been able to kind of do the exorcism and get this accent out of my being. I, yeah, I left Australia quite a long time ago, actually been in the U.S. for 12 years. I was in Asia for five years before that. So you'd think after 17 years out of the country that the accent would soften, but it hasn't. So hopefully you have that subtitle um, mechanism here for Zoom so people at home listening in can understand it, a word I'm saying. Well, you, you know, it, it seems to be a, an obvious fact that uh, uh, folks from Australia seem to excel in the gaming business. I mean, they're just tons and tons and tons of folks come here and very successful so you're just added to that enormous list with that funny accent anyway so let's let's go on i always ask my guests one question and that's how did you get into this crazy gaming business in the first place yeah i, I love it i've grown up in this industry it's a, like i say it's a little bit like hotel california it's the type of industry you can join but you can never leave so many <laughs> people try but they end up back here and yeah, me like many other people, you kind of stumble into it. I did a, a college degree in uh, in economics and marketing and didn't really know what I wanted to do. But as I was kind of working my way through, we call it university in Australia, I was working in a bar and bars in Australia have um, typically 30 slot machines in them. And I was just always fascinated with the slot machines and kind of drawn to them. So at a very young age, um, the owner of the, of the bar said he was going to a great Australian company called Aristocrat to look at some new games and did I want to join him to look at these new games? And I said, yeah, it sounds like an interesting afternoon. So I, I went along to the showroom there and um, met another guy who's in the gaming industry, a guy called Kurt Kazane, who you may know, many will that are listening in. And he was uh, working at Aristocrat and introduced me to the company and yeah, started a, a long and fantastic career with, with that great company. And then that led, led to all sorts of opportunities. But um yeah, it's been amazing for me personally and my family. I've traveled all over the world and all corners of the globe with the gaming industry. And it's, um, I just think, think it's a fascinating industry with fascinating and, and great people like yourself. So yeah, thrilled to be a part of it. Well, you're, you're right about once you're in, you're never out. I, I got out for like a year and a half or uh, in between my stint in Vegas and, and coming here and I had no intention to get back in, but you know, then I got hooked. I got back on the drug. I say I'm a junkie, you know, I'm a, I'm a table games gaming junkie and I just, you know, I'm going to have to live with it. There's only one way out. It's like being in the mafia. There's only one way out. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, I would say I'm, I'm going to guess that I have more years with light and wonder side games, what, whatever you want to call Bally's, yes. whatever, whatever you've been called than you do. And I've yeah. met some amazing people in your organization. I want to, I want to shout out to, for a few of that maybe you're oh, still right. there and some yeah. of there's not there because you just come off an amazing quarter performance. And let me yeah. tell you, Matt, one thing that's always been drawn me to your company, not necessarily your products, but your people, yeah. you know, they're, they're very, they've been genuine. Uh, they're, they're, they're the real folks. They're not trying to sell you. They show you what you got. It's hit there. This is what we've got. This is what might not work for you. And they've always been upfront and honest and just an amazing group of people. And it seems like, you know, like even if they leave and, and go away, you know, they're still part of the family. They they, yeah, they talk to each other, you know, they may go on to different ventures, you know, like you talked about Kurt. Kurt was with Lightmore. Now he's back with Aristocrat. Yeah. Uh, you know, it just it's just a never ending circle. But it's a, it's it's an amazing culture you have there. And, yeah. and maybe you can tell us after I, I get to the, this list, what, what exactly you think makes that happen? But. So, so I got a shout out to Kevin Smith. He's my current rep, uh, Dominic, the amazing Dominic Sill, who's now yeah, back man. with you guys again. Uh, you know, your, your, your service team, like uh, Eric Pick Patterson, uh, Jesse Blake, who's one of my local techs, Craig Simmons, who's one of the local uh, supervisors, uh, Kim Miller, she's no longer with you. Amazing yeah. 
want just a minute, and then we go back and we'll think about amazing talents. Um, my, Matt Pineapples, I don't know if you know him, but oh my God, what what an amazing talent! And uh, you know, you got Jamie Dorbin working for you, and Tony mm -hmm. Lewin, and you know, you had Roger, the amazing yeah, God Roger, Roger, of, yeah. Of, yeah. of table games. Uh, Ryan Yee, Kurt, you, you mentioned, and I can't leave out the gentleman. Uh, 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 of the amazing podcast you have there. It's, it's filmed right in the uh, Division. studios there. Mr. Mike McKinsey and Landon Michael Jones. Not <laughs> yeah. to be confused with two tall Jones, but Michael Jones. So tell me, what makes this culture at Light and Wonder? How, how, how does it keep going year after year? year uh, and, and company after company after company. You know, there's been a lot of changes. Yeah. All yeah, these stay the so same. I can take no credit for any of that. The, the, the list of people you mentioned are, are just fantastic people. I think maybe a manifestation of the industry at large, but yeah, we certainly have a microcosm here of, of great people and a great culture. I think of people who genuinely, like you said, care about the customer. Well, this industry is very small on a, on a relative basis. So you got to treat people right. Your reputation carries, uh, you carry it with you wherever you go. So I think the way you treat people both internally in, in the organization and and importantly, customers who are really an extension of, of our business um, is really important. So, yeah, fantastic group of people. But I think that's, again, one of the reasons why this industry is so fantastic is it's, you know, across many suppliers, many operators there. I get to say, I, get, I wake up every day I, and I get to go to work with my friends. My friends are my customers, people I work with. You know, it's it's pretty amazing. And it makes the job very easy, right? Sometimes you got to pinch yourself and say, hey, you know, it, it, is this for real? But yeah. you, you hit it on the head. You know, a lot of companies forget this key element that you've got two types of customers. You've got the internal customer, yep. which comes to work with you every day and looks you in the face and spends most of their time or most of their life with you. Right. And then there's the external customers. And both of them have to be treated the same. And, I, you know, I, whatever whatever the magic uh, potion is or secret sauce, Matt, keep it coming. So oh, let's you. talk about this amazing catalog of games that the the Light and Wonder has. I'm hooked on this Frankenstein thing, and I, yeah. it's, it's getting to me. And I I, I got to get unhooked from Frankenstein. But you know, you talk about Frankenstein, Squid Games, uh, Rich Little Piggies. You guys are killing it right now, right? We've had it. We've had a decent little run. Yeah, I think maybe even go back a step. I think. The success we're starting to see now in the product portfolio is really comes back to focus. If I go back to like scientific games before we got rebranded to this light and wonder organization, we were this kind of collection of Frankenstein gaming assets. We were everything from a lottery business to a sports platform business to a content company to a digital company. We were trying to be lots of different things. And I, I always say it's hard to be truly world class at any one thing, let alone. 50 different things like we were trying to be a scientific games and so we sold the lottery business and we sold the sports business and really the way to think about light and wonder today is we put games at the center of our universe it's the thing that we are obsessed about i was just across the street before this call started reviewing games it's, it's in our ether it's, it's what we do so yeah when it becomes your obsession and the only thing that kind of um you wake up to every day you start to get really good at it and um you know we've we have an amazing set of talent in the business that's been here for many years, as you mentioned. We've added some people to the roster. And I think it's just ended up being this incredible set of ingredients that's um, you know, manifesting in great games. And it's not just one game or one person. It's you know all of our studios across the globe making great games. The, the big one that's kind of hitting the radars right now is a product called Dragon Train, which is a, an amazing game that's conquered Australia. It's just been launched here in the U.S., and yeah, it's from a little studio in Australia called Star Studio. And, you know, it just show, and that's, again, like one of the reasons this industry is so fantastic is like a little studio in a foreign land like Australia can make a game that can go across the globe and be, a you know, a huge success. But, yeah, Frankenstein designed by Ted Hasso, who's just in behind me here, and Giannis Sombonides, who did a lot of games uh, at a prior company. So, yeah, we're just very fortunate. We've got a great collection of studios and studio heads that have been here a long time some here been been here a short time but yeah we're on a bit of a roll well you know it, it, it's always been a company willing to give the small guy a, a shot if you yeah. tell them you know you've come up with an idea that makes sense that it, it has a little flair to it 
you know what? You guys latch onto it. I remember when you was doing the uh, focus groups groups for yep. different games. You'd almost give anybody a shot to bring a game in and and, and present it. And, yeah. and I mean, we're all, we're all students, whether you're an operator or you're a supplier like us. We're all students of this industry. We spend infinite amount of times in casinos with players, watching them, observing them, seeing how they play. So yeah, great insights can come from any manner of places. So so now you're spreading out into the iGaming world. Yes. Uh, your product's all over that. Uh, you, you got social gaming. Uh, uh, is that? Side play, play, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So that's that's big, getting big. So, you know, you, you're a manufacturer of slots. You're, you're, you, 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 you sell proprietary games and uh, shufflers and all yep. this. So I, the, the big chatter out there in the world right now is, okay, you got this iGaming. It's starting to grow. Yes. Uh, it, it's 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 bringing a new generation into gaming. They're mm -hmm. seeing that most of the you know there's been a lot of talk about cannibalism. Well, you know, uh, will uh, will the this i games cannibalize the current players? And that doesn't mm -hmm. seem to be the case. The case is it looks like eighty percent of the people who are playing online are new customers. So yeah. then that brings to the question: Okay, what what when the the other customer they they uh, uh, what would they call the baby boomers like me or, or yeah. even the next gen, the millennials, once they're gone, you all, all the, the uh, gen X, gen Z's, uh, all these, all they've known is an iPhone yep. and playing games. That's, you know, if, if you look back and I'm sure you remember this uh, at one point in time, digital reels were out early in like nineties, mm -hmm. they failed miserably. Yeah, because yep. nobody was comfortable with that kind of a machine. But then, yeah, totally, along, yeah. then came along the uh, smartphones. Everybody's playing these Candy Crush and stuff on, and so now the digital machines exploded, right? So because everybody was a uh, 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 very comfortable with playing them. So what do you think? What do you think's next, Matt? I mean, are we going to see a situation where maybe the new generation is strictly online or? Uh, you know, I, I think I think the, the the land bases that will survive the best will be a, have a combination. You know, what I mean, they'll have a synergy yeah. between their online platform and their land based platform. But what, yeah. what, how do you how do you see and what are you guys setting up for? What what are you looking to? Yeah, do? so I think those formats of gaming continue to coexist. I think coming out of the pandemic, remember early on when the industry shut down, people were starting to question whether land based gaming was a viable uh, entertainment form going forward. And I, I'd say, like, question land-based gaming at your peril. Like, as soon as we got on the other side of COVID, restrictions came off, everyone went flooding back into land-based casinos. They're going nowhere. Land-based casinos are such an important part of the ecosystem. It's a uh, it's an entertainment experience. It's almost like, I say it's like a third space. You know, you, you live at work, you live at home. You know, casinos for many people is the third space that they go to is where they they congregate with their friends they go to to have meals they go to be entertained and they go to play games and i think that's a fabric of of the u.s society it certainly is in australia and i don't see that going anywhere uh any, anytime soon i think it's going to be a vibrant industry going forward but i will say the consumer has been digitized and um you know we see that in, in every vertical of our life the way we transact payments the way we buy groceries, the way we buy clothing, every, people buy Teslas, um, you know, completely online. So the, the consumer has been digitized. So the notion that we can hold back the digital revolution is a fallacy. You can't. So, you know, the, the consumer has been digitized. And I think the ga gaming and gambling experience will continue to be digitized over time. We just had Rhode Island come online as the seventh iGaming state. Um, and the iGaming markets are growing really fast. So if you think about New Jersey as a great example, it's been live for 10 years now. It's still growing in the mid-double digits, 15, 16, 17% growth rates 10 years after the inception, which just tells you players want this type of gambling. And we know, you know prohibition doesn't work. So if you, you try to you know take uh, iGaming off the table, people are transacting in you know foreign um iGaming businesses. So, you know, we're really pro, pro regulating, legalizing, taxing iGaming expansion. We think it's it's the, the best way um, for us to take it out of the black markets 
into a, a tax and regulated format. So we do think in the next kind of five to 10 years, there's gravitational forces at play here that iGaming is going to legalize across states. And I think, you know, I think every consumer has been digitized. I think, you know, older people, younger generations, everyone's, you know, getting Ubers, everyone's transacting with Amazon. So I don't think the digital gambling experience is specific to the younger generations. I think, you know, our data suggests that, you know, all age brackets are gaming and iGaming channels when they come online. But, yeah, we see it as being incremental and additive, and we see that across the markets that are, that are live today. So I think future cast five years, I think you see iGaming in many more markets and uh, coexisting with, with land-based gaming. Well, I've been uh, I've been through doomsday uh, uh, several times in my life. Yeah. Uh, you know, when California came on Proposition 18 or whatever it was, uh, that was the end of Las Vegas. Right. Uh, when the spread of uh, 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 gaming throughout the nation, that was going to be the end of Las Vegas. And all it ended up doing was bringing more gamblers into the fold. You know, when I was I was the funny thing is when I came into Las Vegas, I'm listening to an AM radio channel. And they're yeah. having a discussion about how the percentage of people in the United States that were gambling. And I'm, mm. going, I'm really going to date myself here because at that time, 7% of the U.S. population had been right. exposed to any gaming. We're talking yeah. about lotteries, bingo, anything. And now I think that number's up around almost 50% had been right. exposed to some sort. Of, so there's still 50% out there. So. You know, in one form or another, they're, they're, they're still going to be gambling. I think we, we're seeing a little bit of uh, uh, issues with the uh, uh, online gaming to where they're not, you know, the regulators, I don't think they understand it as well. Mm -hmm. And so they don't quite regulate it as hard as they do the land base, you know, because I can't go with a credit card just willy nilly and, and, and get money to play and then hit it again and hit it again. Without somebody, you know, being in a responsible gaming position saying something to me. Yeah. And, you know, and that's not happening online. And I know that's going to change. There's a lot of talk right now uh, in, in through the regulators ab about this. Uh, so one other thing I want to talk to you about. And, and you know, well, maybe just one, just one point on that. Yeah. I, I think that's absolutely tantamount that you have the right regulations in place. And we're, we're very big proponents of that. Um, you need those safeguards in place, uh, particularly online. You know, you have human to human contact in casinos, so you can you can look for that. But very topical. I'm a huge Dodgers fan, and uh, Shohei Otani. You probably saw the news here. Um, you know, his interpreter, as as the story goes, uh, wiring four and a half million dollars to offshore bookmakers. Um, you think they have the safeguards in place around harm minimization, around you know making sure they've got all the right protocols in place to, to safeguard. Like that's what legalized sports betting and iGaming is all about. Letting governments tax it, regulate it, put the harm minimization protocols in place so people have the protection because it's happening. It's happening in states all over this country, irregardless of whether regulators want to um, legalize it or not. And so when you tax it and regulate it, you can put the, the right safeguards in, in place so you don't have these types of issues um, you know, arising across the nation. And I couldn't agree with you more. It's, you know, that uh, the, the right regulation will make it stronger. It'll yes. make it a stronger and make it beneficial for everybody to enjoy the thing and not get carried away. So there, there's one other issue that we have here. We have in Pennsylvania, Virginia, we're talking a few other states. And these are these games, skill-based games. What's they're called? Yeah. Skill-based game. They're great games. Uh, you know, I got to think as a, a, a manufacturer of slot machines, you're even concerned by the how easily these proliferate across the the uh, these jurisdictions. I mean, we the estimate here in Pennsylvania that there's 135,000 mm. of these machines here. Everywhere you go, you walk into any laundromat, any smoke, and, and they're here now. Where there's a big push to regulate these machines in Pennsylvania now. And you know, of course, the the uh, manufacturers of those machines are, are are pushing back. But let's say say they they get they're legal. They become legal and and they they get regulated, uh, which I think it, it's official now in in Virginia. They went from banned to to regulated. Is that something that uh, like Warner gets into the skill skill game business sometime in the future? It's really really not on our radar as an opportunity for us. I mean, we have. 
great partnerships with operators. We want to be able to provide them the tools and the products necessary for them to drive their business. Uh, the skill-based gaming thing is a, it's a bit of a challenge because it's um it's not a level playing field. You know, these um, school-based operators are not playing to the same regulations that casinos are. And, you know, our operator partners like yourself are putting down billions and billions and billions of dollars in infrastructure, creating, you know, hundreds of thousands of jobs um, only to have competition come from nowhere, not faced with the same set of regulations. So that's a challenge for the industry. I know the AGA, American Gaming Association, are pushing really hard on this agenda. Um, you know, if if you want to bring those types of products to market, you can. VLTs are a huge thing in Illinois, but, you know, provide the same regulations, the same, same tax thresholds. So the, the playing field is leveled. I mean, and that's probably... Uh, the major thing I would say about that, I I, I got to give a, I got to give these guys credit though these skilled games uh, people, because they 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 brought these things in so silently and so quickly and everybody ignored them and then they they positioned them in the nonprofits and places where now they tug at the heartstrings oh you're going to close this you're going to close my business da 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 da, da. and it it was a magnificent run they have but i think they've gotten to the end of it the worst now they're going they're going to have to be regulated like everything else and it mm. is going to level but you like you said you said it perfectly how can you have you can license an operator have them build a billion dollar facility and then let twenty five thousand skill-based games be within the same county i just yeah. I, I don't know that that doesn't seem level to me but uh yeah. that's what we got it's a cra crazy thing we're on the same page about that so what's new? What's in the future for Light and Water? Anything uh, you can share before the fall? So we had a fantastic uh, 2023 campaign. We just we just closed that and announced our earnings about three three weeks ago. You know, we uh, we grew 22% year on year in um, 2023, which is makes us the fastest growing supplier in the space. So that's a real testament to all you know, all those people that you mentioned and all the other you know, yeah, six thousand employees that we have here at Light and Wonder. So yeah, we're um, we're putting together a really strong twenty four campaign. Uh, thanks to operators like yourself out there, looks like the end consumer looks healthy. Looks like the the economy is holding up nicely for us. So yeah, we're we're looking to to grow the business again um, at a big clip in uh, two thousand twenty four, and really driven off the back of great games. So Squid Game was was one that was a G two E, which everyone was pretty excited about. So that's a a couple of months away here, that same designer that made Frankenstein made, made Squid Game. So we're pretty excited about that. Um, yeah, Dragon Train's taking over the nation. We've got Huff and Even More Puff. We're not sure if you're familiar with that game. That's becoming a big franchise for us. So, yeah, like I said, we've got a great stable of game designers that are just cranking out more and more great games. We've got a great tables business, which has been, um, yeah, has a great lineage back to Shuffle Master and everything that, that's... Um, was designed back in those days. So yeah, we're we're in very solid footing, and I think the industry is in a good space. So well, well, let me close with this. You know, I'm I'm I made an attempt here being a vlogger. This all happened during the pandemic. Somebody said, "Well, you know, I I, I was on a few different uh, live feeds. I think even uh, Light and Wonder did one. Oh, yeah, we and, did. I remember that. And I was on it, and they said, "Well, why don't you do it?" And I ended up started this thing. And you know what? Uh, social media influencers are a big deal now, especially for the slot industry. Oh yeah. my God! I mean, I, my my sister in law's hooked on Brian Christopher, and, yeah, yeah. And, and Brian Christopher is a, 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 a one of my followers on LinkedIn, so I, I'm, I'm good with that. that. But guys like him, uh, Vegas Matt, they've made an incredible impact on the gaming industry. Wouldn't you say so? Oh, it's quite unbelievable. You see these guys in the flesh when they go to one of these, uh, you know, reveal launches, and that it's like John Bon Jovi walked into the building or something. People are losing their minds at these slot influencers. I just never thought I would see the day, but yeah, you know, these guys are total rock stars, and I think all the the great suppliers in the industry are leveraging them to just get eyeballs and get some notoriety around around games as they as they launch. So yeah, hats off to them. You know, I'm. I'm kind of in the younger generation, but I, ne I would never think that the influencers could have such a big impact on the industry, but they are. So yeah, hats off and kudos to them. 
it's amazing. You know, we should have known by the popularity of reality TV that yes. something like this was possible. And now YouTube's made it every and everybody thinks, you know, hey, it's just like sports betting. Everybody bets sports because they played a sport or done something and they think they've got some kind of edge or they they've yeah. actually got some kind of connection to sports. Right. And the same thing goes with these uh, creators. You know, now everybody can go on and put, you know, pictures of their family online or whatever. Yeah. And so they have a kind of a connection. And, and I can see why these these guys uh, and they, they, don't get me wrong. They all got great personalities and stuff. They they're going to make it, man. And they're just going to yeah. be more and more. And keeping up is going to be crazy. But uh, yeah. they've really had a good impact on the gaming industry. I'd like to see a little bit more table games related but you know how yeah. some of the regulators are a little real paranoid about it that's starting to loosen up you see dana white on on now with uh playing a lot of blackjack online yeah. a lot yeah. of people fall on some of them guys so it won't be long i think table games will uh, be right behind matt i just want to thank you so much for coming on being to know it's been a great conversation any last words for the audience Oh, no, we appreciate you. It's, um, you know, I'm a student of this industry. I grew up here. I've, I've done roles at every every level of the company. So um, you asked, I came. So, yeah, thanks for the platform and thanks for everything you do. Uh, I appreciate it. Uh, folks, uh, remember to like, share, subscribe, tell your friends about the, uh, the vlog. That's how we grow. And we'll see you on the next Be In The Know.